Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode of the Subaman Show. Today I'm going to talk about a technology called Network Detection and Response or NDR. We'll go through the basics of the technology, how does it work, the use cases, components, uh, uh, how does it fit in the SOC, current market landscape, how do you differentiate between various technologies as well as how businesses can use this. With that, let's get started. So network detection and response is a technology that detects abnormal system behaviors by applying behavioral analytics to network traffic data. Uh, the purpose of this technology is to capture network data and find anomalies in the network traffic in real time, as well as to provide network specific context when an incident happens. Now this technology is not new, it's been there for some time. Uh, I was lucky that I got uh, to work on this technology way back in 2020. 12 and uh, that's when I got exposure to this uh, along uh, with EDR so I saw how all these technologies evolved over time uh, however there are other technologies like network traffic analytics and, and network analytics and visibility these are the other names given for these technologies uh, if you look at high level this sounds the same the three names sound the same but there are sp specific differences between each of these technologies and that's why it's important for you to understand this entire concept. So how NDR works it is based on data collection. This, that's the first component. So there are three things in any NDR, NTA, NAV, uh, data collection, the threat detection mechanisms and well, as well as the response. What happens once the threat is, is detected? So for data collection, what happens is this technology continuously analyzes uh, network packets uh, or traffic metadata within network uh, within network, which could be internal, east or west, or between internal and externals, which is north south, right? So, data sources can be of various types. So, it depends on the type of uh, technology. So, NetFlow, IP flow is one source of information, which essentially is is uh, high level summary of uh, uh, who are you talking to, which is IPs, uh, what ports, and what's the size of data. That's the typical information you get in NetFlow, IPFlow, and also uh, uh, ports and protocols, etc. Very high level information. Uh, the second data source could be full packet capture. Uh, if some of you have worked on Wireshark, I'm talking about the PCAP that you typically capture and you look at sessions and you try to reconstruct the session on Wireshark. So that full packet capture is also collected by uh, the NDR technology. Then firewall traf traffic logs. Uh, so you have firewalls deployed at both east west as well as north south location in a network and you can capture those traffic logs and look at uh, you know the the direction of traffic and then run algos to find anom anomalies and then recently <coughs> at least for the last few years SAS traffic logs uh, essentially looking at office 65 based activity or google workspace activity to look at what kind of traffic is getting sent to these critical applications for any enterprise. So once the data is collected, whether it's in form of net flow, IP flow, sessions, traffic logs, etc., there the threat detection engine kicks in. So this threat detection engine can be of few types. Uh, it can be rule based, so which could be simple things like, hey, uh, I see port H, uh, 80, uh, but I see telnet traffic uh, going on port 80, which is supposed to be used for uh, the HTTP pr protocol, so the port protocol mismatch. It can look into specific things in the content uh, because uh, of its visibility. Again, it depends on the type of uh, data source. So a packet capture system will see that data. You can extract the file. So things like double extension in a file, a way to obfuscate how files are, go are get getting sent over the network. Then multi-level file compression or embedded file detection, uh, example, a file going in uh, DNS traffic, uh, a malicious file get, getting downloaded mm, as part of the PDF, all those things, right? So it depends on the type of data sources, and that's how the various platforms differ. Now, the first trail is rule-based. The second is the behavior analytics. So all these systems typically have uh, a capability to uh, profile the entire normal activity, uh, you can call it baseline, and then what it does is it co starts comparing entity to entity's history. So it, let's say this IP, uh, this host name, 
what is its current baseline and versus what it's doing now in the uh, near real time or real time period. And then peer group analysis, this, for example, this set of IPs or this pool of IPs, most of them are sending this type of traffic, example, HTTP gets or which is browsing activity. Suddenly we see multiple uploads getting done on HTTP by one specific IP. So those things can be easily flagged out. The third, uh, third detection mechanism is use of signature-based IDS engines like uh, Zeek, uh, Snort, etc. Uh, I've seen some platforms using them. And then uh, also for threat detection, all this data is fused with threat intelligence data to reduce false positives and have more context around this. Now, the third component is the response. What happens if there's a match? So typically you will have uh, notification systems so you can either uh, on the web console or, or the product console, you can manage the uh, alert, or you can send it to a SIM, system, SIM uh, for additional correlation or on a SOAR platform for automatic remediation and response. Or the NDR platform could itself have some automation capabilities using an endpoint like isolating uh, the endpoint using an API. Okay, and again, this is dependent on system. So if I have to summarize how the tech works is, it does data collection, then the threat detection engine runs, and then the response is handled. Okay. Now, the most common use cases for which NDR is used is detecting known attacker TTPs, retrospective detection, which is all about going back into the time and come trying to find a new pattern and see if there's a match. Example, have I seen this particular IP in my network before? and uh, what kind of activity was done, what kind of port protocol uh, was done, uh, accessed, as well as what was went into the session. And then looking into encrypted traffic, uh, the platforms typically have a threat in hunting uh, and a query language interface, as well as using digital forensics, things like session replay. So if your NDR platform has a full packet capture capability, you'll be able to replay the entire uh, request and response parts. Uh, very common activity done in, in, in the forensics world where a PCAP is captured and you look at HTTP response and uh, uh, request. Uh, some platforms also allow ses uh, the session reconstruction, so you will see the exact thing that the end user saw in the targeted uh, session. And uh, another interesting use case could be data exfiltration if uh, you could see uploads or massive data dumps done on uh, unknown sites and then you can look into the platform and see what kind of data is getting into it uh, otherwise what will what typically happens is you get a notification let's say you, you are using firewall that this uh, ftp is getting used on an unknown ip and files are getting transferred you have to reach out to the owner of the F ftp server uh, if you can uh, and then uh, identify it. but if you have a pcap or a session based uh, tool uh, you can exactly look into the session and find out what file went up there. Okay. Now, so these are the common use cases. The third thing is the component. Now, what are the components in this platform? So typically this NDR platform will have sensors. Sensors can come in the form uh, of a hardware or a software uh, that can be deployed on the location where you want to capture. So example, if you're going for hardware, you want to capture north-south, you would want to mirror the traffic and get it sent to the sensor. And this sensor does the analysis, it creates metadata, et cetera, and does some enrichment, and uh, then send uh, this data to the analytics uh, module. Also, the sensor can be installed on uh, an IP network, an IS service, or an OT network. And then typically, there will be a management console, which could be on-prem or SaaS, uh, and then uh, the third critical component is the data store. Where does all this data get uh, to stay? It can be cloud, it can be on-prem. Uh, you can decide whether you want to retain metadata only or full data. I've seen policies in the full uh, PCAP world where the raw data will be stored for seven days and metadata can be stored as for three, uh, sorry, a month to three months. Again, depending on the capacity of storage that the company has, and all this, of course, are some of the deciding factors when uh, companies look into NDR products. 
again the difference will be based on the type of data uh, example firewall logs or netflow will take less space compared to uh, full pcap based uh, collection now how it's common uh, how the system is deployed you start deploying sensors the system starts building baseline uh, and you start as an admin you start enabling rules or signatures etc and then the system detects anomalies and threats and then all these notifications are sent to the uh, workflow that you've decided again based on how your SOC processes are you will either it ha handle it on the case management of the platform itself or you can send it to sim or a SOAR platform so how does it fit into the SOC so just to give you a summary of various threat detection response tech beyond NDR in the SOC world which is sim endpoint detection and response UEBA and then you also have threat intelligence platforms threat intelligence feeds a SOAR and a data lake now the most common things I've seen in, in, in SOC today are SIM, EDR, and UEBA. Most SIMs have U, UEBA now. Uh, and then they have EDR and, of course, a data lake for doing uh, threat hunting and, uh, and querying the uh, historical data. A um, lot of them have SOAR also now. Uh, threat intelligence feed is also very common. Uh, threat tip is not, is not common unless the SOC is uh, highly mature. Now, India uh, fits right along with these to, uh, these platforms, and because the type of information that it is capturing is diff is related but different. So, example, the sim will from if sim is capturing the firewall log, the firewall log will say, "Hey, uh, Prashant made this web connection or HTTP connection to this known bad domain, and it was uh, blocked." But uh, two hours later, the firewall will say that, "Okay, this." Uh, might or might say that this session was done by Prashant on an approved domain and it is approved because I didn't see anything malicious in the session. Uh, but then so let's say something bad happens and the SOC team wants now look at uh, Prashant's session. They can use the NDR and reconstruct the entire session that Prashant did uh, without logging onto Prashant's machine. So they can use the web interface, reconstruct the session, download the files that are downloaded, extract those them, maybe send them to a sandbox and do the analysis. So it is commonly used for forensics also, okay, as I said in the in the use case section, a very common thing. Now, so it fits along with the threat detection and response. So I also remember th uh, that way back in uh, 2017, uh, there was a architecture called Gartner uh, SOC architecture and it listed NDR as a very uh, uh, common or a required component in the SOC domain. Uh, of course, with the uh, world moving to SaaS, SASE technologies and SaaS, a lot of traffic now goes through uh, SASE platforms and uh, hence it's getting harder for uh, network uh, traffic vendors or, or NDR vendors to get capture that data and, or it's very expensive to export data out of these clouds. But uh, the collaborations have started happening in the last few years uh, and uh, I do see value in NDR uh, from overall SOC incident response perspective. Uh, in terms of the market landscape, uh, here's a list of sample vendors uh, that I could uh, search on Google. There's no preference. Uh, it's just a list uh, that I've taken. Uh, Aristide One, Cisco, Core Light, Dark Trace, Extra Hop, Mixed Mode, NetWitness, Stellar, Cyber Vector. They are alphabetically arranged. I have no association with any one of them, except I know people who work there. Some of them have been my colleagues. So. Uh, and if you want to compare these vendors, again, go back to the, uh, the 3K things. What kind of data is getting collected? What kind of analytics they can do? And how can they integrate very well into the SOC, right? both from automation perspective as, as well as a notification perspective. Okay. Now, also NDR uh, versus XDR is a critical thing that you have to understand. I've seen XDR uh, vendors uh, calling themselves NDR or NDR vendors rebranding themselves to XDR. Now, again, go back to basics. First principles of cyber, NDR is focused on network traffic and XDR is holistic in nature. So NDR could be part of XDR's story. Okay. Uh, however, I've not seen a uh, vendor, to my knowledge, who does full XDR and uh, with full uh, PCAP-based uh, NDR 
completely. I'm I like PK based NDR because it lets me replace those replace those sessions and look into the session. Uh, typically, firewall log or NetFlow log based NDR is is good. It can help you find baselines, but it might not be as effective when it comes to for doing forensics on these sessions because logs or NetFlow doesn't have the actual get and the gets and puts of the session. You can't extract the files, right? Those files are gone once once the session is over. Okay, so that's why NDR is very interesting use case. Now, if you uh, look at how uh, various companies can uh, use it, is either they can uh, engage with the OEMs or vendors that I've listed above, or they can have a managed NDR service. Although the managed NDR service uh, is very limited in nature, but a lot of companies provide uh, that. A lot of MSSPs provide that. Okay, but not all. So yeah, that was it. Thank you so much. Uh, keep liking, keep sharing. Uh, if you have any questions, do ping me on LinkedIn or on the blog or on the podcast. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.